Hey everyone, network virtualization is the word we're hearing all day today, and we've got one of the rock stars, an architect on the team. So, Brad Hedlund, can you explain what you do in the team and, and how you work with network virtualization? Thank you, I'm a part of the VMware Networking and Security Business Unit, so I'm an engineering architect on that team. I'm with the CTO office, so I'm talking to customers on a daily basis, I'm writing content, making PowerPoint slides, um, visiting more customers, and, and uh, working a lot with the social media community, helping to evangelize what network virtualization is, why it's important. Exactly, we also have the link to your, your blog, so we'll definitely make sure that the readers can view it in the titles. Um, so, network virtualization, uh, to a lot of people it's very new. Can you explain a little bit about the one-on-one -on, -one, one -on, -one on network virtualization? Absolutely, so I think everybody understands virtual machines and virtual computing, how you were able to fundamentally change the operational model of computing by introducing an abstraction, an abstraction of the virtual machine, where you take components like CPU, memory, NICs, you bundle it together in this virtual machine, you can manage it as a software object. And you can create them instantly, you can delete them, you can change them, you can migrate them, you can snapshot them, clone it, template, all the things that you could never even dreamed of in computing, you can suddenly do with virtual machines. The network, though, hasn't kept pace with that type of, uh, of innovation, where networking is still very you know, statically provisioned, there's no mobility, it's, it takes a long time to you know, figure out what capacity you have, do you have enough, and provision that. So while we can deploy computing within seconds, to, to deploy the network for an application can take weeks you know, and, and longer. So the network virtualization, what we want to do is provide that same abstraction for networking that we provide for the virtual machine. We want to create the abstraction of a virtual network. So things like switches, routers, firewalls, load balancers, a complete network with services, not just layer two and layer three, but firewalls, load balancers, and security, and encapsulate that as a virtual network that you can then fundamentally change the operational model of networking. So everything can be automatically provisioned. If you want a new vApp, um, you just automatically provision the network, including firewalls, load balancers, everything can be automated. Exactly, so the, the, as fast as you can deploy computing for an application with VMs, we've been able to stand up VMs in seconds over the last decade, but we want to bring that same speed and agility of provisioning the network for those uh, virtual machines as fast. So once the entire network is deployed in a software construct along with the VMs, now you can deploy compute and network together at the same time. So now your application architecture to deploy a new application is a transaction of deploy the compute, go deploy the network, con con confirmation here, confirmation there, and then you can audit against the whole thing rather than just throwing virtual machines out there and hoping the network's ready or waiting two weeks for, for it to be ready. So fundamentally uh, changes the way we deploy apps at the same speed of, of virtualization. Well, that sounds really good and network virtualization as I've told you is, is new concept and I hear a lot of people thinking about okay but how do I implement a network virtualization layer? Do I install a hypervisor on my switches? That's not what it is, right? Can you tell a little bit more about how it interacts with the existing hardware? Can you use your existing hardware? Yeah, absolutely. So with server virtualization, virtual machines, we've had virtual switches in the data center for quite some time, you've had vSwitches that these virtual machines have been attached to. And those vSwitches have been uh, in a software layer, on the server, in the hypervisor, but they've been very basic. They've just been simple layer two bridges. What we're doing with network virtualization is we're bringing a whole lot more capability to those vSwitches that are already there. Instead of just layer two, they're layer three, they're firewalls, and then we plumb in the load balancing and other security services, tie that in with gateways to touch to the physical network, and you're done. So it's very, it's non-disruptive because we're using this, the software that's already there, and then the top of rack switches, the blade switches, the core switches, none of that has to change. You got Cisco Nexus or UCS in there, or you got Juniper or Brocade, whatever. You don't have to rip that stuff out because we're leveraging the software that's running on the server 
to implement the virtualization for the network. Well, that sounds really good. I can basically keep all my existing hardware, um, save my current investment, uh, but still be able to use actually the, the new era of, of networking ready for the cloud. Um, because what you mentioned with firewalls also being implemented in software in a virtualized way, that means that they can probably move along with VMs as you move from one data center to another. Is that what you see customers using this for as well? Yeah, absolutely. Networking services like firewalls and load balancing is now equally mobile as a virtual machine. We've always had this vMotion. vMotion's been this killer application for VMware for a long time. It's great if you can move a VM around, but if the network connections can't follow with it, that uh, that scope that you can do a vMotion is very limited. So we think that by tying the network services to the software switch that the VM is attached to and having it follow it anywhere that you can de uh, deploy a hypervisor software at, now the mobility and the, the potential for virtualization is, is, is much greater now that the network has been virtualized as opposed to just virtualizing compute. Perfect, so finally the network is catching up with all these good things of cloud computing. Um, we've talked a lot about what we have now. Can you also talk a little bit about your future vision? You're being an architect on the CTO option. Where are the possibilities for this taking us in the next couple of years? Yeah, I talk to customers a lot, and one of the things that comes up a lot is customers are trying to figure out how do they manage applications in one data center versus another? How do I have total application portability between data centers? I think that network virtualization is going to really bring that to a complete reality. Like it could be a total killer application, because let's say you have a couple of data centers, it's very easy to start up virtual machines in another data center but to really stand up that application, you need to have the network with it as well. And recreating the network that those VMs are attached to has been a tremendously you know, painful thing to do. Right? You need to make sure you have the right hardware stuff there, somebody has to go and manually configure it all. But if you can recreate the network as quickly and as faithfully as you can recreate the computing in, you know, in another data center, complete with routing, load balancing, firewalls, all of that. We think that multi-data center, business continuity, disaster recovery is really going to be a killer application for the enterprise, for network virtualization. Uh, look, you know, we're looking into 2014 for that and beyond. Um, so we're really excited about those possibilities. Well, I'm excited as well, and I know all the people here asking me a lot about network virtualization. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments field. Uh, but this week, we're going to focus a lot more on NSX, the announcement, but also the partner announcements around it. So be sure to follow the YouTube channel and find out all you need to know about network virtualization. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.